everyone, it's your good pal Alexander Fleming here, and would you look at that, another revision video. And golly, this time it's on audience theories. I cannot hold my excitement. Let's get going, guys. Alright everyone, start of this video, we have two separate models for you. These are known as the effects model and the hypodermic model. The effects model suggests that the consumption of media text has an effect on its audience. This is typically a negative thing and as a passive audience member, we lack the power to resist the impact that the media text has on us. The hypodermic model suggests that ideas are injected into the audience. Stuart Hall's reception theory suggests that producers code the media text with the audiences decoding the text. However, there are a number of possible ways that a text can be decoded. For example, you can have a dominant slash preferred way of being decoded, which is how the which is how the producer expects or intends for an audience to decode it, so they agree with the producer's intentions. A negotiated response would be if the audience member neither agrees nor disagrees or takes elements that they agree and disagree with from a text. Oppositional is when an audience member fully opposes the intended meanings of the text. Right, everyone, George Gerbner's cultivation theory suggests that long term exposure to TV content can warp or distort your view of reality. By comparing a selection of people with different viewing habits, he was able to discover that an ad additional misconception named Mean World Syndrome had affected a lot of these people. Put it simply, these people seem to overestimate how much violence actually occurs in real life due to exaggerations through watching lots of violent content on TV. Lorma and Katz's Uses and Gratifications theory suggests that different audience members have different reasons for consuming a media text. Instead of mindless entertainment, a lot of us expect to get something from it, which is, in other words, the gratification. Different needs for media text include cognitive needs, which is basically the intake of information, affective needs, which is used to satisfy emotional pleasures, personal integrative needs, which are to improve self-esteem, social interactive needs, the need to stay up to date with what's going on in other people around you's lives. Tension free needs, which is a form of escapism. So escaping from the often harsh reality of life in something a bit more laid back and relaxed. Mary Cova Jones theory of desensitization suggests the more violence we are exposed to in the media, the less sensitive we become to it, even changing our perceptions of violence in the real world. Copycat theory suggests that audiences will copy what they see in a media text. Aristotle's theory of catharsis suggests that viewing of tragic, violent or upsetting content can purge negative emotions of a viewer. This goes against the prior copycat theory, as instead of encouraging the viewer to partake in violent or damaging activities, instead these activities have already been partaken on screen so the audience has no reason to partake in these activities. The suspension of disbelief is the requirement to believe or accept a premise you would never believe in the real world. An audience will have different levels of believability depending on the genre of a text. For example, if you were trying to create a realistic drama when all of a sudden there were just like aliens or something, you're not going to believe that, you'll be like, what is this? This is why, even if a universe isn't believable, it must set itself limits for what is and cannot happen in that universe's rules. Well, my friends, I think that just about covers everything you're going to need to know about audience theories. So, let's hope this question comes up in the exam, and if it does, you're going to get an A-star, guys. Alright, see you soon, bye!